Hey guys, it's Tara here with another tutorial for Viva Las Vegas stamps. Today I'm going to show you how to create beautiful faces for your art journal using rubber stamps. And to do this, my background is going to be a vintage sheet, piece of sheet music. You can use anything you want, canvas, cardstock, as long as if your paper is too thin it might get all bubbly and warped, so that's up to you. Uh, what I did to create this template is I found an image that was large in the magazine and cut it out. I decided that I had liked the shape when it was facing the back side. I also used this beautiful set of eyes from Viva Las Vegas. So to start with, what I did is I taped down my face shape. And today I'm using pale pink paint. You can use anything. It doesn't have to be realistic colors. And what I did was I dipped and I just lightly went around the edges of the template. And only about halfway up, so just about to where the hairline would probably be. It's up to you though. You can go all the way around if you'd like. That's completely up to your own preference. Next, I went and just painted down some shoulders. One thing when you're painting shoulders, after you get just past the head, do a kind of a little raise up and then back down so that your shoulders just don't dip down. That's up to me again, it's completely up to you. Now that we've got that, you can take off your template and stamp your set of eyes. And I think right about there is good. And I'm using the archival ink today in jet black. I apologize that my ink pad has some, or my stamping block has some ink on there. Let somebody use it and it's covered. We'll just line that up. A little bit of pressure and pop it right off. And you've already got your base for a face this way. Next, I took a cream colored. This one is by Apple Barrel Colors in medium flesh. Acrylic, you can use anything you want. And I painted in around the eyes and face and then below here which I have got one already started up to that point and a little bit extra to show you to see if you happen to watch me do that. And I literally just colored it in. After doing that, what I did was I took my black pen, black marker, for any permanent marker, I use a fine tip, usually um, Microns. This one here is a Zig Vellum Writer, which if I can get to the camera here. And then I just kind of traced where I did that pale pink to give a little more pop to my shape. I decided that I wanted a pink hair. And so what I did was I just, I'm just gonna redraw it in here, drew a hairline and I gave her a side part. You can part your hair any way you want. You'll see that there. And then I took a little bit more of the pale pink paint and I added her hair in, which I'm just gonna add a little more touch-ups. And I like to cover this black line just with a thin, thin layer so it's see-through. And what it does is it adds a little bit of shadow. So you see her hairline, but it doesn't stand out as a jet black line. And I just kind of pull it down into a little bit of long bangs, I guess. I really like the look that way. I also took and watered added a watery layer for color bones through here. Just a little line and a little line coming off the shoulders and a little bit of shadow when it was really watered down underneath the chin. And this kind of gives you the throat um, effect, which gives you just a little bit more depth so that it'll come to life a little better. Now I'm gonna show you how to draw in the nose. And you need to decide, usually what you wanna do is break your face into thirds. The bottom third, the lips would typically go straight through the center. The second third, the nose would come right to the bottom of. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna try to draw this upside down. Please forgive me if it does not come out perfect. And I'm doing this so you can see it here. I'm gonna draw it and it's gonna look like three little bumps with the middle one a slight bit longer. And if you want to get really fancy, you can add like a little dash mark down which gives you 
the effect of the side of the nose kind of coming down. That's all I do for the nose. It's very simple. And you can see here, just, just the simple, which blends in actually really well if you do a butterfly as the antennae. And you don't have to cut them out that way. Next, what I like to do, and this is completely up to you what order you do it in, but I like to do a really, really watered down layer for the cheeks. And I've just globbed up some pink on here. And I'm just kind of blobbing it up in that kind of shape that comes like your cheekbones, like high cheekbones. And this is really watered down, which shows up a lot brighter here in real life, I suppose, than it does on the camera. Which I'll bring that up so you can see it a little better. And then I just kind of fade it out into the cheeks. If you don't, if it's too dark, you don't like it, you can always go over it with another layer, which I just took off most of that. Didn't want to take off that much. I'll let it dry a little bit more. Okay, and you can keep adding layers, keep taking it off, it doesn't hurt anything. And you can, but it's still being wet, you can't see it as well. You can see the light reflecting. I got the cheeks there. Now what I wanted to do for her, there's a couple of different things. I like the idea of even using different types of rubber stamp images for the mouth. You can, one of the things that I thought would be kind of fun would be to add this little creature, sort of. You see here, what I did was I went ahead and stamped it out and I cut off the antennae and legs. And you can see just how adorable that is on there. So that's an option you could do. You could also cut off the wings and have just the gear shaped eye as the mouth. Another option, I'm gonna go ahead and do this so you guys can see. You can cut the wing, I'll show you both actually. So there's one, you can cut the wings off and use just the wings to create type of a butterfly and move them up. You can add something in the center of them. You can do it completely. There's so many routes you can go and it's minimal drawing. It is completely effortless. Another really fun thing I thought would be for like one little word. I know a lot of people pick a word every year that inspires them. So you can pick like number one and maybe add the wings behind that as well. And that's completely up to you what you want to do. And I really like that. So I think I'm going to pick that. And typically I use Mod Podge to glue my images down, but the one I have right now is gloss. So I'm going to use some matte gel medium, which also dries really quick. So I really like it. And I just stuck my finger in it. I'm gonna place a little bit on the back of each wing here. And just kind of tack it down. And these, doing journaling this way is so fun. You can be completely creative, have your own style, and not have to worry about getting the eyes right, getting the mouth right. You can do something that's completely unique. And you don't have to worry about the hardest things to draw. Just playing around with it, it's okay to make mistakes. It's fun this way. So you can see here that I have tacked that down and I'm picking like the one, I think I'm gonna do a one little word type of feeling with this. I also kind of like the idea of making my journal lady a queen. So what I've done is took this awesome stamp here it's very large and I stamped it on a piece of vellum. And the reason I picked vellum instead of regular paper is again, I want the word or the music note to show through. If you stamp on vellum, you do have to let it dry a little longer or heat dry it. But I stamped it a little bit ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a real quick cut, cut out of this. And I used my archival on this. Stays on would probably dry a lot faster. And you can use whatever ink you want. If you have one that doesn't dry very quick, maybe use VersaFine. You may have to let it dry overnight or definitely heat dry it. Heat set it, I should say. But that's up to you. There's, this is about playing. It's what's supposed to be fun. 
So use what you have. You don't have to go out and buy something special. I don't know if I want it to go long ways. I kind of like the long ways look of this. And I'm just going to take this and kind of cut it into my opinion of what I think a crown should look like, I guess. And just kind of go up. And you can see I've got some fingerprints on there, so this is still not completely dry. And I'm leaving the bottom. I'm not cutting very much off the bottom because I did her hair out quite a ways. But I really like the look of that there. And for the top, I think I'm just going to... I actually think I'm going to follow this harlot one a little bit because I really like... It kind of makes its own crown here. Just take it up. I apologize that this is uh, kind of on the fly crown making, but there we go. And I really think that looks cute. I want to make it, take that off a little bit more and maybe make these ones kind of off the wall. I want it a little strange. That's more fun, maybe. Okay, that'll work for now. So she's got a crown now, eyes, a mouth, and those were all done with rubber stamps in just a matter of minutes. And you have almost a full image to start journaling around. After that, you can just build up layers of paint. And any color you want is fine. I think I want to use a pale turquoise. This is one of those really cheap um, paints. I like the cheaper they are, the better for me because they are thinner. And I think they work really well for the art journaling. And I'm going to grab a little bit more water and then kind of wash it out. And you can add shadows in this way, putting them on the outside of the nose, which will make the nose pop off the page a little bit, maybe a little bit more under the chin. Don't be afraid to go over that little black line. It's okay. And a little bit right there and down. And then go back and kind of peel the color off as it starts to, as your brush gets all the paint out. And pull it underneath the eyes down. You can do a little bit below the nose if you have room. Don't be afraid to take a napkin and dab, dab some of the color if you think it's too dark. You can always add more on top. Don't worry. And I always like adding a little bit on the chin. That's just me. It's up to you. And then I think I'm going to add blue to the hair too. I really like the idea of cotton candy looking hair, I guess. It's just going to be a lot of fun. And I'm just going back and forth, not really worrying about where the hairline's going to be. Just trying to keep it in my original size-ish because I cut the crown for that. But that's it. She has a really adorable look. And I need to paint the white in the eyes because I actually stamped this one after I painted the skin tone. So she's gonna have a crown. And what I would probably do once I get this crown on here is I'll take my marker and I want the edges of the crown to really pop. So I'll just go over the edges of the crown. I'm gonna do this on here so you guys can see. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just take and... And you can do this with the paint also. Uh, if you like specific colors, if you wanna do some doodles coming out the top of it for like the spikes. If you wanna add gems to this or like crystals, that's completely up to you. I'm just doing this because I like the way it kind of pops a little bit more off the page, which you'll see there. And you can see it just really comes to life that way. And I think I might even offset it. I really like that look. So there you have it. There's the basics for creating a face using rubber stamps. These are all Viva Las Vegas stamps. And anyone can do this. Do not fret if you don't think you can art journal because you can't draw faces. You can. Sorry this video is taking so long and thank you guys for sticking in there. Have a great day.